Hi, my name is Paul Moradian. I'm part of Database Freedom Team here at AWS. In this session, you will learn the modernization challenges organizations face, how to overcome them with the fully managed AWS services, and the flexible way AWS offers to help customers migrate successfully with self-service tools, incentive programs, and expertise. The agenda I'd like to cover today is discuss the, the modernization momentum, what is it we see in the marketplace? The broad set of management database services that AWS offers, how to move to fully managed services and break free from all guard databases, the flexible way to migrate, and the resources we make available here at AWS throughout this journey. Now, when you look at the migration drivers, what are they? Well, we can categorize them into three different areas. One of them is the evolution of data. We're collecting more and more data every day. In fact, the estimations are five, tenfold every five years. And even that is an understatement. So you need to partner with a cloud provider that can give you all the tools necessary to manage all that data, how to do analytics on that data, keep it safe, and store it. And, it, and at one point, you know, read that data without bringing it back into databases for queries. So it's very important to partner with a, a cloud provider that can give you all the tools necessary to do so. The second area that we see the big push and drivers towards modernization is microservices architecture. More and more uh, companies are moving towards microservices architecture and abandoning uh, and, and migrating from their monolithic applications. Microservices architecture gives them the flexibility to develop faster and also to pick the right tools for the right job. Each microservice can use it, its own properly sized, you know, appropriate tools, such as databases. The thing with the microservices is when you have that many microservices now, you have to keep track and make sure that you can analyze any efficiency issues and, and, and keep track of all of the interconnection between these microservices. Having the right tools available for you as services will provide you a great flexibility instead of you having the burden to build all these tools. The third and, and one of the, the, the important aspect is the DevOps. DevOps is a way to build and develop quickly and, and, and the cycle times are very short. More and more enterprises are moving towards the DevOps because their reaction time to marketplace has to be much, much faster than it was years ago. You need to have the right tools, right services, so you can test faster, deploy faster, keep track of all the changes you made throughout the process. And AWS offers all the tools necessary to do so. Now in 2015, we launched the AWS database migration services to make it easy for companies to bring their production databases to the cloud. We have now migrated over 350,000 database workloads with AWS database migration services. DMS for short makes it easy for customers to migrate database engines they're using on-premise to run on AWS or to migrate from proprietary engines running on-premise like Oracle, and SQL Server to open source engines running on AWS like RDS MySQL and RDS PostSQL. Now, customers like Verizon, Trimble, Expedia, and the US Department of Veterans Affairs have successfully used database migration services to migrate databases to, the, to AWS. Now, Samsung is a great example of that. Samsung account is the platform through which users access Samsung devices and services such as, such as Samsung Pay. Roughly 400 million 
Samsung accounts, 1.1 billion users that are active on this platform, which sees about 80,000 requests per second. Now, though their, their, though their legacy system was adequate when it was built 10 years ago, Samsung needed a more flexible, microservice-driven solution to support growth and innovation. And according to Samsung, their legacy system was not ready for microservices architecture, nor did it offer reasonable pricing. Also, also scalability was an issue. So Samsung moved their entire workload using database migration services to Aurora database in Amazon. They were able to take their monolithic application and modernize it using microservices. And the whole process took only 18 months. And at the end, they realized 44% cost reduction on their databases. So when we talk about fully managed database services, it's important for us to go back and look at what is it that we do with self-managed. When we talk about self-managed, the entire hardware, software, configuration, it's all something we have to do. We have to deal with that. We have to be on top of it and it takes a lot of time and effort. And lead time often is quite long. Performance and high availability are two areas that we have to continuously monitor and be ready for. What if something happens? Do we have high availability? What if a peak load starts coming in? Do we have enough performance? You know, capacity planning is a tedious, lengthy process that often we see enterprises go through on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis. And what happens oftentimes, we end up buying more than we need just in case. So it will have excess capacity throughout the year for that one or two week time where we needed capacity. And security and, com uh, and compliance, it's, it, uh, there are two areas that every company nowadays have to keep on track and be aware of all the issues surrounding it. So when you move to fully managed, none of that, none of those areas is something that you have to worry about. It's done on your behalf by Amazon. So what's left there to do? Well, what's left there is things that really matter to your business. Looking at schemas, creating new schemas, reacting for business needs, data modeling, that sort of thing, analytics, and what does that give you at the end of the day? Well, for sure, it will give you the increased agility you're looking for. It will be more agile to react for business needs. No longer you need the lead time to purchase hardware, configure them, patch them, you know, upgrade them, things like that. It's, it will give you a reduced cost because now you're just paying for what you're using. No longer you have excess capacity hanging around. If you need more capacity, you just provision it and it'll take minutes. You have performance at scale. The more performance you need, it's there for you to utilize. And if you no longer need that performance and you're past your peak time, you can shrink back. So you have that flexibility. And also you can innovate much, much faster. Good ideas, uh, testing a new idea in business, no longer requires big capital expenditure. You can test it, verify it. If it works, it's great. If it wasn't a good idea, you can move on. You're not committed to hardware purchases and capital expenditures. At AWS, we offer full services of database services. For relational database, for example, coming from Oracle, SQL Server, uh, MariaDB, we offer Amazon Aurora and Amazon RDS. But if you're coming from a non-relational end, such as MongoDB, Cassandra, we, ha we have uh, uh, appropriate 
uh, uh, databases that can suit your need. For example, document DB for MongoDB, key spaces for Cassandra, and so on. But there are some customers that require workload residency to be maintained on their on premises. And they like to utilize the cloud services that Amazon provides. For those customers, we have a hybrid solution. RDS on Outpost and RDS on VMware. These services offer better benefit of the managed RDS for on-premise database deployments. Now, the most straightforward thing we see over and over when customers are, uh, they like to reduce their burden of administration tasks on their databases, and they don't want to re-architect their application and change things on their application, but they're looking for better performance and availability, they often move from their on-premise Oracle, for example, or uh, Microsoft SQL Server, straight to uh, Amazon RDS. This gives them the flexibility they want, the scalability they're looking for. It will be self-managed, and there is no, much, no, no, no change on their code. Same thing if, when customers we see a lot of time, that's you know, uh, uh, straightforward migration and modernization uh, that are coming from non-relational end of, of things, such as MongoDB, for example, right? They move directly to DocumentDB. Again, it reduces their burden of maintaining databases on-premise. They don't have to change much on their code, application code. And also, they get the performance, availability, and also security that they, they're looking for with a managed service. Kaplan was a great example of that. Kaplan uh, uh, services close to 1.2 million students globally through their higher education, test preparation, professional services. And they had close to 12 data centers throughout the United States. The position they were faced in they, uh, and, and they were caught is that they were facing end of life hardware on majority of their data centers. They had also experienced an outage in the past with Hurricane Sandy, close to a week of outage in their New York data centers. They needed a more flexible environment to respond faster for higher demands. And their business is cyclical, right? So when students returned to college and uh, at the beginning of semesters, their demand goes up considerably. So for that, they needed some sort of flexible environments. So what they did, they moved majority of their workload, uh, uh, the Oracle, uh, SQL Server workload to uh, uh, Aurora databases. And they shut down close to 12, uh, uh, close to, uh, from their 12 data centers, uh, only four of them were left behind. Everything else was moved to AWS. In this process, uh, they uh, realized that now all of their environments were consistent, built the same way, uh, you know, maintained the same way. They had the same patching, you know, uh, security patches were all there. They didn't have to worry about anything else. And also, they had a better feel now of their expenses that can tie directly to their offerings. A great success, truly, moving their Microsoft SQL servers to RDS. Now, when we talk about break free, why do we want to break free from existing old guard databases? Well, for one thing, they're very expensive. The license cost alone is quite high. It's proprietary. They lock you in, it's very hard to get out. And they have punitive license terms. You can't run certain commercial databases outside your on-premise environments, or if you have to do that, it has to be on their own cloud environments. So very restrictive. And often, they come back with audits, which is extremely time-consuming 
and takes away from other activities uh, that you are engaged with. So one of the areas where I, I see more and more questions asked, well, can I get the same type of performance and reliability through commercial databases? Yes, you can. We've done that with, uh, with Amazon.com. Amazon.com used to run completely on commercial databases. We moved everything from commercial to open source, migrated, modernized the entire thing. One of the areas that you can look into is Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora DB gives you three to five times better performance than your commercial counterparts and up to 15 replicas you can have. It also runs on multiple available zone and can, it does continuous backup to S3. It's totally encrypted at rest and in transit. And the nice thing about it is completely fully managed. This is for relational databases, but for non-relational database, Amazon DynamoDB will be a great example there. Millisecond response time, unlimited throughput. It's a serverless architecture and it has global replication. That's exactly what happened with Expedian. Expedian was faced with changing its image from just a credit bureau to a place where customers can go to understand and take control of their overall credit, identity, and financial portfolio. To achieve that, it, they needed to move their mission-critical customer-facing platform off Microsoft SQL Server to DynamoDB. That was a great success. Later on, when they purchased another company that was running on an open source MySQL platform, they moved it to Amazon Aurora. The results were 100% uptime, seamless support for up to 50 to 75% growth of their data. And along with that, they reduced their administrative tasks from 60 or 90 days to a matter of hours. Total success story. So what are the flexible ways to migrate successfully? Well, here at AWS, customer obsession is what we pride on. We wanna do what's best for you. And we understand sometimes it's a tall order to move from your on-premise environment to completely modernize the refactor. That's why we work with you and we have a, a journey that we, we, we can walk you through that suits your need, whether it's a lift and shift migration to EC2 or moving to a managed platform such as RDS or completely modernize and refactor. Now, obviously, you need to be eventually on the modernized end because that's where you're going to see the biggest performance gains and also the biggest cost benefits. You know, enterprises that have done so, they've seen close to one-tenth of the expense they used to have running things on-premise, moving to Aurora or DynamoDB. That's why we have created Database Freedom Program. Data's Freedom Program is an initiative to support our customers so they can free themselves from the high cost of technical lock-ins of commercial databases. What we do with that, we provide you with all the tools necessary for you to go through this process. For one thing, we have a tool called Schema Conversion Tool. You can run that on your environment, say it's Oracle, and and point it to where you want to be, whether it's Dynamo or Redshift or Aurora. This tool will convert your schema and identify all the objects that need to be looked in further, things that you have to slightly refactor. Once the schema is converted, then database migration services will move your data from your original database to your destination database. 
With combined with these tools, you can do quite a bit of you know, migration and testing. We also provide experts to help you with this journey, such as architects, professional services that you might need, the education, the training that you might come across. And also we have a program called DMA that basically comes and does the whole migration on your behalf for a fixed cost and a fixed time. So for most customers they, have done, they haven't gone through this journey, the three areas that we walk through is the assess, mobilize, migrate, and modernize phase. For in the assess phase, we ask to get two or three of your typical workloads, and we run the schema converge tool on them. Based on the output of the schema converge tool, we kind of assess what's going to take to migrate and what type of uh, object that you have within your databases that need to re be refactored. We can do a, a POC along the way to test things. And also, we can come up with a total cost of ownership so that you know exactly once the migration is over, what would be your ongoing expenses on a quarterly basis when things are completely moved to AWS. A next phase is mobilize. This is where we dive deep and start analyzing all of your uh, environments and determine the, the level of effort it's going to take and the cost associated, associated with it for each database migration. We also can uh, execute a proof of concept here also and assist in your migration effort by providing professional services or partners to do the work for you. Now, when we talk about partners, we have a, a, a lengthy list of partners that are certified, approved by AWS, that they have done this type of work and they continue helping us with a lot of our uh, customers. We can definitely recommend, if need to be, a partner that can work with you on your migration journey. And also, if you have questions about licenses, uh, you know, how can I deal with my current licenses? What, are, what kind of terms do I have? Are those binding terms? We have license advisory partners that we highly recommend, such as Hustle Bricks. Now, this migration, it's something oftentimes we see clients do themselves. A lot of time, we provide a partner to work along. They can do the work. But also, we come across often questions in enterprises where they are risk averse. They, and they like to reduce the risk of cost overrun, for example. Of. So for that, in that case, we recommend AWS Migration Accelerator. That is a, a program that will provide you a fixed price contract for the entire migration and what happens, you pay after it's delivered. However you want to migrate, and however many workloads you have, we will be glad to help you throughout this process. And along the way, we have considerable cost incentives we can apply based on the workload size and the amount of migration you intend to do. What I've done is included a few links for you to click through and dive deep on some of the areas I covered today. I highly recommend to take a quick look at that. Again, please don't hesitate to call us. We will be more than happy to consult with you and help you determine the right tools for the right job. And also we have some certification and training that we highly recommend if you are thinking of modernizing and moving from your existing environments to environments that you're not quite familiar with, this would be a great place to go in and learn and, and, and have a total understanding. Thank you very much for your time. And please do not hesitate to call us and please fill out the survey. Thank you very much.